In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate federal income tax. Now, in previous videos, I showed you the formula and we talked about some things like deductions for AGI, deductions from AGI, credits, and so forth. I think to really understand, it's best to just jump in with an example. So let's say that we have a single taxpayer, okay, and by single, I mean that's their filing status, right? So there's other filings. Uh, you could say that someone's filing status is married filing joint, right? That means there's two people, they're married, they're filing their tax return together. But we're just going to say we have a single taxpayer. They're filing as an individual. Individual. We'll talk in another video about uh, different classes of filing status and head of household and so forth. But this is going to affect... Uh, this this individual class this is going to affect how much your standard deduction is and so forth which we'll get into and this person has no dependents that means that they don't have an elderly parent living with them that re uh, requ uh, depends on them for financial income or support or they don't have any children that depend on them for support and we're going to assume that it's the 2015 tax year that we're talking about right that's going to affect our numbers and that would mean that you'd be filing in 2016 right because you file 2016 of what happened the year before right so let's jump in and we'll, we'll put some numbers to this and we'll make it a little easier to understand so we're gonna start out with gross income right and we've talked about that that includes wages it might include some investment income and so forth but we're gonna start out with this gross income and we'll say that for this individual we'll say that gross income is twenty seven thousand dollars for the year right now, our first deduction, right? We talk about deductions for AGI, or I could put deduction before AGI, however you want to think about it, right? We're going to have deduction before AGI and then one after. And so the for AGI, let's just say that this person, they just have $1,500. And I put that in parentheses to let you know that it's being subtracted out, right? That's why I've got these parentheses here. We're subtracting this deduction. And let's just say that this person had uh, student loan interest, right? So student, there are many different types of deductions for AGI, but in this case, the person had some student loans and they paid some of the interest on that balance. Uh, the interest came out to $1,500. So now that's going to give us our first subtotal, which is adjusted gross income, otherwise known as AGI, right? So AGI, we just take the 27000 and subtract the 1500 and that's going to give us $25,500. Right? So that's our adjusted gross income. Sometimes when you put together your state income tax return, it might say, what is your AGI from, you know, from this line on your federal income tax return? Right? So that would be your AGI. Now, we're going to get into the deductions from AGI or deductions after AGI. I'll just write that in. However, it's easier for you to remember. So deductions after AGI, uh, we basically have to, to make a decision. Right? We have to decide do we want to itemize, right? Do we want to itemize, or do we want to take the standard deduction? Now, itemizing, I'm not going to go in depth because we talked about it before, but we're basically saying how many, uh, how, how much did we spend on charitable contributions? How much did we spend on mortgage interest, right? Your interest on your mortgage uh, up to your first two mortgages, that interest uh, is itemizable. That means you can collect all those up and say, okay, here are my itemized deductions. And what you do is you count those itemized deductions. So let's say that all those itemized deductions that they add up to $3,400, right? Might be some medical expenses in there or charitable. There are different things that categorize as itemizable or not and you add them up and it's $3,400. Now what you want to do is compare that to the standard deduction that you're offered based on your filing status, right? And so if you're you're just a, an individual and, and you're not like head of household or something like that, you can look up and see what your standard deduction is. And so as of this tax year, the 2015 tax year, uh, the standard deduction is going to be $6,300. Now because of that, you say, hey, well, which which this is actually larger then what the deduction I would get if I itemized. So it's basically like if I went and counted and, and all these little items and, and put them all together, I actually would be better off and get a bigger deduction from just saying I just want to take the standard deduction, right? But you only get one of these two. You, you have to pick, and obviously you'll pick the larger one, and there's nothing wrong with that. So then the deduction for, or excuse me, the deduction from AGI, right, the deduction after AGI, in this case, 
you're going to take the standard deduction because it's larger than if you itemized. So now over here, I'll just put 6,300, right? Because you're taking that standard deduction. Now we're going to have to think about how many exemptions we have, right? Now let's just say that, okay, basically you're just supporting yourself, right? You don't have a spouse that you're supporting, you don't have any children that you're supporting. So your number of exemptions would just be one, right? So you would just have one exemption. And for the 2015 tax year, and again, this is something that changes every year, it goes up a little bit. For one exemption, it would be $4,000, right? And that's, that's deducted from this adjusted gross income along with the deductions after AGI, right? This is a standard deduction and the exemptions. They're all subtracted from the AGI to get our taxable income, right? Our taxable income. <clears throat> and then in this case, our taxable income is going to be $15,200. And so that 15000 well, all we did was we took this 25500 and we subtracted these two items, right? And that gives us our taxable income of $15,200. But even then, remember, we're not done. That's just the amount of income that's going to be taxed. Now we have to think about, okay, well, what rate? is it that we're going to be using and this is where it gets not really complicated but but a little complicated because we have what's called a progressive uh, income tax structure in the united states and so to be able to get that rate uh, we're going to have to go to our tax tables right we're going to have some what are they called tax brackets basically and so you might have heard someone oh i'm in, bumped up into a newer tax bracket it basically says okay we look at our taxable income and then we say, well, how much taxable income do we have? Not gross income, not AGI, taxable income. And if it's between zero and $9,225 in tax year 2015, that income is taxed at 10%, right? So let's look at ours. Ours is 15200 right? That's more than 9225 So do you say, oh, okay, well, the tax rate's just 15% because we're in here? No, that's not how it works, right? This is actually our marginal tax rate. That'll be on our, our highest income that we have. So now this is just a, just a tad confusing. So let's just say it like this. Let's look at this 15,200 here. The first 9,000, let's just p picture you're counting off dollar bills out of this 15,200, right? The first 9,225 of it is taxed at 10%. And then the difference between the 152 and then 9225, right? We take that difference, right? The amount that you exceed the 9225, that gets taxed at 10% or 15%, excuse me. So the first 9225 is taxed at 10%, and then all the way up as you keep going, the remainder up to 152 is taxed at 15%. So let me write out the equations here, and that might make it a little bit easier for you to understand. So we'll say 92. 25, right? The first $9,225 we make is taxed at 10%, and that's going to give us tax of $922.50. But we made more than $9,225. How much more? Well, we're going to take, and let me, let me change colors here to emphasize this. So now we're going to go with $15,200. That's our taxable income, right? And then we're going to subtract, and let me right here, subtract the 9225 which you already said we're going to pay 10% on this, right? So we're going to subtract that out so we don't double count it, right? That's going to give us $5,975, right? Which is going to be taxed at the higher rate, the 15%, right? So in reality, we're paying two different tax rates, and this is going to equal $896.25. So we're paying two different tax rates here. So you see that the first $9,225 of our taxable income is taxed at 10%. And then the next $5,975 is taxed at 15%, right? And so this is just the basic idea of how these tax brackets work, right? So if you're in, and there's a, there's a large number of brackets here, and I kind of skipped a few just to make it easier for you to see. But if you're in the highest bracket and you make $413,201 or more, at that point, the highest bracket, you're going to get all the way up to 39.6%. But remember, you're only paying 39.6% on the amount of taxable income that exceeds this number, that 413201 right? 
So now we can just take these two amounts, right? We can add them together. And that's going to be $1,818.75, right? So we're playing like we're paying both those different tax rates based on how much the, which uh, that where the income falls in the bracket. So we're not even going to put anything here for the rate. Uh, we're just going to say what our tax due before the credits, or what that tax due. So that's one thousand. Let me change back the color to make it consistent. One thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents. And I just got that from here, right? And so that's our tax due before any credits, right? So now we might have some tax credits. Remember, tax credits reduce tax dollar for dollar, right? Deductions reduce taxable income, but credits are going to reduce tax dollar for dollar. So if we owe, let's say, $500 and we have $500 in tax credits, then we're, our tax liability is wiped out. So let's say that we have, well, let's say $500. I'm going to put that around parentheses so you know it's being subtracted. And let's say that that was some kind of education credit. Right, so there's something like the lifelong learning credit or something like that. We take an education credit for some tuition that we had, and we have credits of $500. And so now that's going to directly reduce this tax due before credits. So now it's going to be one thousand. Let me let me change the color here to. Okay, so the tax due is going to be one thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents. Right, all I did was subtract that $500 credit from our tax due before credits. Now. Even after having done all this, you might look and say, hey, okay, is this the amount I send to the IRS, right? But you have to remember something. You have to remember withholding, right? So withholding, uh, when you look at your W-2, assuming you, you have an employer and you're not self-employed, when you have the withholding, uh, you not only have withholding of things like FICA, but you also had your federal income tax. Basically, some of the money was being withheld from your check under the assumption that you were going to have some tax due, right? And so let's say that your withholding uh, was that you had $1,400 of withholding. Now that means throughout the past year as you were working, there was $1,400 with, withheld uh, for your purposes of your federal income tax. Where would you see that? It'd be on your W-2 that you get from your employer at the end of the year. So 1400 was subject to withholding, right? So what does that mean? That means you've already paid $1,400 toward your federal income tax return, but you only actually owe thirteen eighteen and seventy-five cents, right? So you've actually overpaid in a sense, right? Even though you haven't sent a check to the IRS, they withheld more than what you actually owe. So now to figure out, well, what happens? You just say, okay, well, I'm going to take this fourteen hundred, and I'm going to subtract this amount that that is due right and that's going to tell me how much I overpaid right and what you actually overpaid by and I'll change colors again uh, you overpaid what is that eighty one dollars and twenty five cents so you overpaid oh let me you overpaid eighty one dollars and twenty five cents so that means you're entitled to a refund right people are waiting on their tax refund you're wondering what's going on what happened is they have more money withheld, typically, than, than what they actually owe. So you have a refund here of $81.25. So you file your return, and you will get a check or a direct deposit back from the federal government for the amount that you've overpaid.